The ethmoid bone consists of two ethmoid labyrinths, one on each side held together by a sieved horizontal plate, called the lamina crib rosa. Each lateral mass or labyrinth, has many bony septa because of which, there are many air cells in the ethmoid, called the ethmoid air cells. As already stated, the ethmoid bone is divided by bony septa to form air cells. Their appearance on a CT scan in the different planes is shown here. This is the axial or horizontal view. The coronal view. The sagittal view. Between the two laminae cribrosi, there is in front, a superiorly pointing spur, the crista galli. Across from the crista, running along the entire length, between the two crib rosy, and at right angles to it, is the perpendicular plate of ethmoid. The perpendicular plate is part of the bony nasal septum. The vomer and independent bone forms the other part. This is a view, of the anterior skull base, to demonstrate the laminae crib rosy, and the cristagalli. The filaments of the olfactory nerve pass through the holes in the cribriform plate. The lateral edge of the olfactory fossa is raised vertically upwards and is called the lateral lamella. The height and width of the lateral lamella may vary considerably between individuals. The ethmoid bone is separated from the orbit by a thin plate of bone called the lamina papyracea, which at times can be dehiscent. This is a view of the lateral wall of the nose, as seen from the medial side, by making a window through the septum. Shown below, is a view of the lateral wall of the nose as seen from the front by an endoscope. You can see here that the ethmoid bone is bordered by the turbinates, middle, superior and at times the supreme, on its medial side or the side facing the nasal cavity. The ethmoid bone is open superiorly. The root for these open cells is provided by the orbital plate of the frontal bone, which extends medially and is called the fovea ethmoidalis. The fovea ethmoidalis extends up to the lateral lamella of the olfactory fossa. This picture illustrates more clearly the orbital plate of the frontal bone. This picture illustrates more clearly the fovea ethmoidalis. The middle, superior, and supreme turbinates also called the ethmoturbinals, originate from ridges in the lateral nasal wall of the fetus, and extend medially as bony lamellae, or ground lamellae. They traverse the ethmoid layer cells, and their free ends in the nasal cavity, are the turbinates. The ground lamella of the middle turbinate is a well-formed constant structure and it divides the ethmoid air cells into an anterior and a posterior group of cells. Amongst the anterior group of ethmoid cells, two types, need to be specially described, the agarnaceae cells, and the bulla ethmoidalis. The agarnaceae cells, lie immediately anterior and superior to the insertion of the middle turbinate. The ethmoidal bulla is the most constant, and usually the largest air cell in the anterior ethmoid. It sits like a blub, 
attached to the lamina papyracea. Occasionally it is poorly developed or it may be large and fill the middle meatus like a balloon. The number of posterior ethmoid cells varies between 1 and 5. The most posterior cells, may develop laterally along the sphenoid sinus, and extend beyond its anterior wall or, may extend superiorly over the sphenoid sinus. These cells which extend laterally or superiorly are called the ONOD cells. The ONOD cells may lie in close association with the optic nerve, and the internal carotid artery, something which should be borne in mind, when surgically approaching these cells. After discussing the different types of ethmoidal cells, a very important component of the ethmoid bone, needs to be described. It is the uncinate process. It is a thin bony structure lying in the sagittal plane, in front of the ethmoidal bulla and resembles a slightly bent hook or a boomerang. It has a postero superior concave margin which is sharp and lies largely anterior to the ethmoid bulla. The antero inferior margin is fused to the body of the ethmoid labyrinth. The posterior end of the uncinate process attaches to the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone, and to the ethmoidal process of the inferior turbinate. The uppermost segment of the uncinate process can extend to the base of the skull, or turn laterally, towards the lamina papyracea, or it may attach to the anterior insertion of the middle turbinate. This is a view of the middle meatus after reflecting the middle turbinate superiorly. A sickle-shaped, sagittally oriented area is seen, which is formed by the free concave posterior margin of the uncinate process, and the convex anterior surface of the ethmoidal bulla. It is called the hiatus seminularis. Through the hiatus seminularis, a three-dimensional space called the ethmoidal infundibulum can be approached. The ethmoidal infundibulum is a three-dimensional space located medial to the lamina papyracea. The entire lateral surface of the uncinate process provides its medial wall. The lamina papyracea provides the lateral wall. Since the entire anterior margin of the uncinate process attaches to the lamina papyracea at an acute angle, the ethmoid lymphandibulum ends blindly in front at an acute angle. Lying in the floor of the ethmoid lymphandibulum is the ostium of the maxillary sinus. The fate of the upper end of the infundibulum is dependent upon the fate of the upper end of the uncinate process, as previously discussed. And finally a word about the drainage of the ethmoid sinuses. The anterior and middle ethmoid air cells drain into the middle meatus, along with the frontal and maxillary sinus, while the posterior ethmoid cells drain into the superior meatus, along with the sphenoid sinus. The osteomedal complex, refers to an area in the middle meatus which links the frontal, maxillary, and the anterior and middle ethmoidal cells.